Uh, let's have another round of applause here for the Harford Heights Choir. Yeah. Yes, yes. Very nicely done. Uh, when we were researching the history of School 99, which was originally called the Columbus School, uh, we discovered that when it was closed back in the 70s, the students from this school were reassigned to uh, Harford Heights Elementary School 37. Uh, down the street on Broadway and uh, we were told that at the time by Baltimore City School officials that um, Columbus School here, School 99, was believed to be one of the top performing schools in the city at that time. Uh, so we thought it would be appropriate to memorialize the historical connection between the two schools and to mark the significance of the ceremony today by extending an invitation to the principal and the students of Harford Heights um, Elementary to, to share in the occasion. And I'd like to thank Principal uh, Thomas and all the parents who come out to support the choir. You did a beautiful job and you're going to be hearing from them again at the close of, of, of business today here. Um, I'm Kevin Bell. I'm the Senior Vice President of the WOTA Group. Um, on behalf of all the partners to help make this day possible, I'd like to officially welcome you to the kickoff of this historic event, which we call the Columbus School Renovation Project. Um, when, we, when we return in the fall of this year, maybe it'll be a little bit warmer, uh, the Columbus School Apartments will welcome 50 Baltimore families into brand new modern affordable housing units right here in their beloved community of South Clifton Park. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, and, and our mission to be a full participant and a partner in the revitalization of the North Avenue corridor from east to west uh, will be moving along full throttle. Um, it is now my pleasure to welcome to the podium the chief executive of this great city, home of the world champion, Baltimore Ravens. Yes, all right. Yeah. Uh huh. And this lady is a champion as well. She continues to champion the cause of community revitalization and affordable housing options for families across the city. I'm very proud to introduce Mayor Stephanie Rollins Blake. Thank you, and good morning, everyone. Good morning. Kevin, thanks for the kind introduction, and to the young people from Harford Heights, thank you very much for sharing with us this morning. I hope you're having a great school year, yes? Yes. Well, we're reading lots of books. Yes. Wonderful, I always like to hear that. It's, it's an honor for me to join everyone to celebrate this great step forward for this community and for the city as a whole. I'm very pleased to be here with our comptroller, Joan Pratt, the city council president, Jack Young, uh, who was with me this morning as we prepared the city for the impact of your boss's work, the sequestration. Um, we, we were having a conversation about the impact, and I know that we're going to continue to be in dialogue with our federal partners because the impact is real, and to make sure that we're having conversations because I know uh, Jerome Stevens is here on behalf of uh, Senator Cardin and Michelle Brown on behalf of Senator Mikulski, and they get it. They understand that the, the impact uh, to this type of work that we're doing, even the basics, trying to get more affordable housing is being put in jeopardy, and, and so many of our vulnerable uh, families are being made more so because of the work. And we talked about what that would mean uh, for someone who is unable to get uh, public assistance uh, because of cutbacks and what that means for their, you know, putting them at, at risk for eviction and then what that means, you know, down the road. Um, so all that to say, uh, thank you for being here. We appreciate the partnership that we've had with, the, with our federal delegation and we really support the work that I know that the, so both senators are doing in uh, reaching a resolution that will um, pull back uh, these these cuts and I appreciate it. Uh, I'm also uh, pleased to be here with uh, Councilman Carl Stokes. This is your district and I, I know that you are proud to have these good partners in your district. We are here and I want you to know that I'm as cold as you are and I, I'm not I'm not standing up under one of those nice uh, heat lamps. I'm, I promise you I'm going to talk uh, quickly um, but I, I, I do think this is worth celebrating 
Um, we are here, and I want to thank Kevin Bell and uh, Michael Barlin, the executive director of the Urban Development Housing Service Alliance, um, Sylvester, P Patricia Sylvester from the Multifamily Housing from HCD, and all of uh, Commissioner Graziano's team. You know, and I, I, I keep going off script, but I, I, I really need to say that so many people, um, I think, don't appreciate the work that housing has done, our commissioner has done, and his team has done. We've been, in, in the face of what has been over 50 years of disinvestment in the city, um, we, didn't con we didn't make excuses for why uh, the, the vacant houses remain uh, standing. We got to work. And we've torn down more vacant and blighted structures than the past than, than past administrations have been able to do because we're committed to making sure that the people who are living in the communities have to look at this every single day and are losing faith with every day that they see it, know that change is coming uh, to their neighborhoods. And I really want to thank the entire team at um, housing and um, to really say thank you, because I gave them a challenge when I came here. I said, do what you need to do. Hire who you need to hire. Fire who you need to fire. Create the partnerships that are going to get things moving in our city, and, and they really did it. And I'm, I'm, I'm pleased, very pleased and proud of the work. Um, this is such an pro uh, exciting project to see come to life. It's a beautiful, beautiful historic structure, the Columbus School, which is on the National Register of Historic Places, and it's fallen into disrepair. And this is a great opportunity, but we needed the right partners to get it restored in a way that will uh, bring honor back to this community. So we entered into a partnership with the Woda Group, sold them the school and 12 other properties along North Castle, Castle Street. And uh, what we're getting in return is 50 units of workforce housing. And who thinks we need more workforce housing in Baltimore? Clap your hands. Yeah, all right. I agree. You know, this is a this is a solid anchor for more development in the community. The the government, even in these partnerships, we don't have to do everything on our own in the sense that, you know, once we start the development, the private market can start to fill in, but we need to create these catalyst projects, and this, this is really a catalyst project, that fu when future tenants move in, they'll have a choice of a one or two ben bedroom unit with community space, thank you very much, tenant storage, laundry facilities, you just need somebody to do the laundry now, <laughs> office uh, space and ample parking. Uh, this is vacants to value at work, and for those who question the impact, just drive them past Columbus uh, School and let them see what we're doing. Uh, this, the impact, you can see this impact all throughout the city. We've transformed uh, communities that have been challenged with blight, as I mentioned. 250 vacants have been torn down. More than a, nearly a thousand more are being rehabbed. And the sales of city-owned vacant property have increased under my administration by 500%. More than 140 new homeowners have received $10,000 home ownership grants through Vacants to Value. And, even though we've demolished more vacant properties, you know, we still have um, funding restraints. So I knew that part of my 10-year financial plan had to take this into account, and we announced uh, in the state of the city that we uh, have a plan to change that. We're going to uh, front load the $9 million in new demolition funding from the Maryland Attorney General's mortgage settlement. Second, we're going to quadruple the local dollars for vacant de uh, value demolitions to more than $100 million over 10 years. And finally, to make sure that people are seeing an impact, to be sure that people throughout the city know that, that the, the legacy of these vacant, build, vacant homes in our city is coming to an end, we're adding a one-time $10 million surge in funding next fiscal year so we can begin to see immediate, immediate impact. Altogether, the 10-year financial plan will help to tear down 4,000 vacant structures. And I know our friends in the media want to focus on the trash fee and not focus on the growing part of the 10-year plan. But let me tell you, there's more than just a trash fee in the 10-year plan. It's a, it is a plan to get Baltimore growing today. The same way that, that, the, what, that the governor of Michigan is in the place to have to put in an emergency financial manager for Detroit, is not that they didn't see the signs, they didn't take the steps. And I'm not placing blame. There's a whole lot of blame to go around. I don't live in Detroit. I don't know how it happened. But I know here, when I saw the signs, I'm doing something about it. We're not going to find ourselves in that position. So, um, you know, this demolition surge will greatly support the other aspects that we have in Vegas to value. Um, combination, we have the live near where you work, the recently announced Wells Fargo City lift grants that are going to allow tens of thousands of dollars to be on the table for down payment. 
Um, we, we have so many institutions that are part of Baltimore, hospitals, at uh, colleges, universities, and now we're going to be more attractive for th these, uh, these students, the residents, the doc, all these, everybody that supports all these great institutions, we want them here right in Baltimore. So we are going to continue our work with all of our partners, making the tough decisions now so we can continue to be in the position to plan for growth in our city. I know that it's going to be a, a tough haul, uh, the work that we're doing to, uh, to make sure that we do not incur the $750 million in projected structural deficit that we see coming down uh, the road now. Uh, but it will take not just um, me willing to step up and to say that it's coming, but partners being able to say, let's make these hard decisions together so we can be in a position to grow. Thank you very much. And again, to the students, I'm sorry, I probably went over a little too long and I know your fingers are freezing like mine, but I, I hope that you know uh, that this is a sign that we believe in your community and we want uh, you uh, to love the neighborhoods that you're walking through. And that's why we're making these investments. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to welcome to the podium now a tireless champion for Baltimore neighborhoods. Um, he's my friend and partner in revitalization, uh, Council President Jack Young. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank um, the Water Group for inviting me to this um, very, very worthwhile and historic project. This 100-year-old school will be transformed, as the mayor said, into 50 um, apartments for uh, low to moderate income people. Um, I want to thank all of the partners, the federal partners, the state partners, and of course the mayor um, already talked about the housing department that does a great job uh, year in and year out trying to realize the 10,000 families that we're trying to track back here to the great city of Baltimore. I know that um, going up at the corner where the marches are going to open up a new uh, grocery store in what we consider a food desert, um, all of this development is coming together in these new um, opportunities to help grow this community. Um, I know that um, most of the community organizations up in this part of the uh, district is uh, looking to work together to, to do a whole lot of great things um, as we move forward in the city of Baltimore. Baltimore is on the move. Uh, despite what um, naysayers might say, um, we work very well together with the council and the mayor. We might have our little differences, but we all want the same thing. And we're working tirelessly to make sure that Baltimore continues to thrive. And we're going to do everything within our powers to make sure that we continue to work together to make sure that Baltimore is a place where people choose to live, not where they feel that they're trapped to live, but where they choose to live. Because we're going to do some great things here in Baltimore again, thanks to all of our partners. Uh, thanks, uh, Comptroller Pratt, for being here. And thank Councilman Carl Stokes. He's my councilman. I live in the 12th District. And I'm looking forward to making sure that he continue to push for these projects so that we can get <laughs> our neighborhoods um, you know, up to uh, where they should be and go after these vacant landlords to make them either invest in their properties or turn them properties over to someone that will. And again, thank you for having me. Thank you, Jack. I, I just want to say that I think the council president, he's, he's looking good here with what he's got going on. Uh, <laughs> Um, the Baltimore City Controller Joan Pratt is always kind enough to accept our invitation to events like this, to celebrate with us the great things that are happening in our city around investments in our neighborhood. Uh, I'm delighted to, um, to introduce, and I'm glad that she was able to join us today, Controller Joan Pratt. Good morning, Mayor Rollins Blake, President Young, Councilman Stokes, Friends and guests, I would like to congratulate the uh, congratulate and commend the Water uh, Group, Housing Services Alliance, and all parties involved for their commitment to bettering the lives of Baltimore City residents with this Columbus uh, School Apartments project. Ventures such as this offer an array of opportunities for residents of the $13 million Columbus School Apartments. Upon completion this fall, residents of the South Clifton Park community will welcome 50 new quality, high quality, affordable housing units in a historic building with a modern appeal. 
in spite of tech, uh, in spite of tough e economic times, it is wonderful to see Baltimore continue to focus and grow, and find ways to provide our residents with much-needed services, along with this affordable, innovative housing. Baltimore is energized and enriched by projects such as this. They have a vested interest in the city's productivity, progress, and growth, as well as job creation, job readiness, are always welcome interests as we endeavor to keep Charm City as a progressive metropolitan center and on par with the rest of the nation. On behalf of the citizens of Baltimore, I would like to thank the Woda Group, Housing Services Alliance, and everyone responsible for the creation of this project, and I look forward to its completion. I also commend all of you for your vision to empower, expand, and elevate our city, and for giving the future residents of the Columbus School Apartments a new place to call home. I wish you all the best. Thank you. This gentleman's a lifelong resident of Baltimore City and chair of the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. And he'd love to see more projects just like this bring revenue and families back into the city of Baltimore. I'm pleased to be part of that initiative. Our company is pleased to be part of that initiative. And I'm especially pleased to represent your representative here in South Clifton Park, Councilman Carl Stokes. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Glad to be here, of course, with the, pres with the mayor, the president, the controller. The controller and I grew up not far from here, um, and we remember uh, the controller and I just being regal regaled with uh, these great stories that President Young used to tell us about when he went to school here, and uh, <laughs> we were looking forward to the day that we would, uh, but anyway. <laughs> the, uh, so thanks everybody to the great communities of uh, South Clifton Park and Darley Park and Broadway East who are here this afternoon, uh, and to the great folk from Wardle Group and the Housing Alliance and the Baltimore City Housing Group. Uh, for being here and, and coming together, collaborating uh, to do what's about to happen. I'm so happy to be here today, not only for this single event today, but as mentioned before, for the great uh, uh, resurgence that's happening all along uh, this trip. I remember we used to hold hands from Hilton to Milton across North Avenue, uh, praying and hoping uh, that things would change, and, and uh, thank God our prayers have been answered. Uh, as uh, resurgence is happening uh, with the uh, marches opening the uh, food market, uh, with this great project here, uh, with what's happening uh, along, and I may go out of the district, down to Coppin uh, University, where uh, much is happening down there. Kevin Bell and the Water Group are a part of the resurgence uh, around Coppin, as well as up here, so they are working from Hilton to Milton. Thank everyone for being a part of this great, great, great uh, endeavor uh, across uh, district and boundary, boundary lines. The cold has got something to do with my mouth not working. Uh, but, uh, but thank you all, and we look forward to the continued progress and uh, this being home uh, to many citizens uh, at an affordable cost to them. Thank you. And joining us today are some individuals who are pivotal to our success with the Columbus School Renovation Project, as well as our success in helping to revitalize the North Avenue Corridor. I'd like to acknowledge some of them now, if I, if I could. Uh, Michelle Brown, representing Senator Barbara Mikulski. Uh, Reverend Jerome Stevens, representing Senator Ben Cardin. Pat Sylvester uh, from CDA. Uh, Julie Day, Deputy Commissioner of Housing and Community Development here in, in the city. Peter Engel, uh, Assistant Commissioner in Housing. Eric Booker, Assistant Commissioner and President of the new um, East Broadway Community Association. Uh, Joyce Moskovitz, I know you're here somewhere, Joyce, from Bank of America, Senior Vice President of Bank of America. Um, Ed Delaney, I think Ed is here, uh, Senior Vice President for Community Development. Uh, yeah, there's Ed, uh, Capital One. Uh, Liam McGuigan, President of the Board of Directors of HSA. Liam, I know you're here. Uh, Mike Barlin, of course, my friend, uh, Executive Director uh, for Urban Development of HSA. Um, Bambi Vaughn, Executive Director of Rural Development for HSA. Uh, Robert Bender, 
deputy director of HSA. Uh, Patricia Griffiths, uh, home ownership director of HSA. Uh, Andy Cohen, my colleague uh, with WOTA, senior vice president. Um, Ernestine Carter, president of New South Clifton Park Community Association. Ernestine, I don't think she runs a daycare. I didn't think she was going to make it here today. She's she's warm. She's, she's her kids and she are warm. Uh, and then Lauren, uh, excuse me here, Skizek, Committee for Historic Preservation from chat. Okay, so what we're going to do here now, I know these these kind uh, folks, the mayor and and council president and councilman Stokes um, got a meeting uh, at 12 o'clock that uh, they're, they're all together in. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do um, some moving dirt. And these ladies are going to get their shoes all dirty. But me, I was smart. And I wore these things here. So, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, Reverend Epps. Roland Epps is going to um, uh, uh, give us a prayer. And then we're going to move over and move a little dirt. And then um, these folks are going to have to head back to City Hall. And we're going to come. We're going to come back and finish up the program. Um, so I'm sorry. Excuse me, Reverend Epps. I... There you are. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, I knew you were here somewhere. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate if you'd if you'd lead us in the prayer. Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'll be as brief as possible because I'm sure you all is just as cold as I am. Um, it's good to see everyone, uh, recognizing everyone behind me, all the honorees and all those that are there. It's good to see you all. Go Ravens. I'm trying to keep the spirit alive. Amen. But let us submit to prayer. All wise and eternal Father, we thank you. We praise and we recognize you for all that you're doing in our lives. Father, we thank you for how you've brought these few people together to take on a magnificent vision. Now, Father, we ask right now in the precious name of Jesus that you, you continually give us the victory over the enemy. Allow us to take back these communities and make them vibrant, living neighborhoods. These and all other blessings we ask in your son name, Jesus Christ. And we say together, unified, amen. amen. Thank you, Reverend. I'd like to recognize one other person. I, I, I'm afraid I, I miss my friend, Reverend Dante Hickman. There he is. 